The i7-13700 makes you wonder, what's the purpose of the K? Let's talk about it. Yo, what up YouTube? And today I just wanted to mention uh, the i7-13700 uh, is a CPU that I recently picked up because I was building an ITX build and you know, the the prospect of it being, you know, an i7, 13th gen, but lower wattage, uh, you know, easier to cool in a sense, seemed like a no brainer. So I decided to go and pick one up and I noticed there wasn't a lot of reviews on it. So that's all I wanted to do today was just give you a review. Nothing crazy. I'm not going to sit here and try to oversell you on going to get the 13700. But if you're looking at this video, You've obviously thought about it. So uh, just wanted to maybe help you make that decision. So as I mentioned, you know, what's the purpose of the K exactly? Now we know what the purpose of the K is. It's unlocked, it's overclockable, uh, but the CPUs are so similar. And um, as I get into showing you some of the benchmarks and, and stuff like that, you know, even the numbers that you see on the 13700 are a little bit misleading, I would say. Um, so when you look at the 13700 compared to the K, you can see, I mean, by and large, they're very similar. Um, it comes in, a, you know, about 20 bucks less that they recommend for the non-K. But once you start looking at it, same number of cores, same P cores, same E core, same hyper threading. But then look at this. It's a 0.2 gigahertz difference on the non-K, so 0.2 gigahertz less on the non-K. Um, and really, you get down into the base frequencies, they are lower, you know, for sure. That's a noticeable difference there. But, I mean, everything else, same amount of cash. And then right here, like we talked about, lower wattage. Um, again, it's non-overclockable. It's locked, in a sense, so you get a little bit lower wattage there, but I mean, again, everything else, it's basically identi identical, same integrated graphics, all that sort of stuff. So very similar in what you get, which again was why it intrigued me. I wanted the 16 core CPU, you know, but the lower wattage, again, in a small form factor build is preferable. Doesn't mean that you can't go with the K model and you can't, uh, outfit it with appropriate cooling, but that brings a lot more work, uh, probably a lot more money. And, you know, I'm a big fan of saving money where you can. So that again, intrigued me. So, you know, I'll throw up on the screen here, you can see the PC that I built it in. It's not the smallest form factor in the world. It's a Bitfinex portal, really cool case, kind of older now. So it's kind of lost some of its uh, I guess, cache, but I still think it's a cool case. I've had it sitting around for a while, decided to put together a PC to use in it. Decided to go all ARC, or all Intel, I'm sorry. So I got an ARC A770. And um, part of, you know, testing out the CPU, and I realized, you know, that 65 watt TDP doesn't really mean a whole lot because this thing turbo boost, as you can see on the screen, well up, to 150 watts, um, you know, and when I was running Cinebench, it would just stay. And then it would thermal throttle pretty aggressively and the speed of the CPU would drop, you know, down into the three gigahertz range because of that thermal throttling. So when I first built the PC, I built it with the uh, black, or black, the Be Quiet Pure Rock LP because it's a very small, uh, form factor CPU cooler, and it was labeled as a 100 watt TDP, which I'm sure it works really well with 100 watt TDP. Problem is, this thing doesn't really have a TDP less than 100 watts. <laughs> as we showed, it gets up to 150 watts if you want really want to let it stretch its legs. So I'm replacing this with the um, Noctua NH. U9S, let me actually try to get this in the camera, the U9S, 
which should be right at the max of what the Bitfinex portal allows. It says it allows 125 millimeter cooler. That's a 125 mill millimeter cooler. So it should work, but um, just in an effort to allow the CPU to stretch itself, because usually what I have been doing is I go into the BIOS and I lock its sort of um, ASUS performance boost I enable it, but lock it at 90 degrees Celsius. So it really doesn't give it a lot to boost. So usually when I'm running tasks or something where it requires it to um, soak up a lot of wattage, it sort of locks that wattage at about 75 watts is about as much as it allow it to take to keep it in that 90 degree range. I'd like to be able to let it, you know, run wild if it wants and go all the way up to 150 watts and hit that five gigahertz if it's able to. So hopefully this new cooling solution will be able to let me do that. But another reason for um, choosing, I would say the 13700 as opposed to the 13700K is pricing. You know, if you look in here just on Newegg, you know, the price between the K and the non-K is pretty minimal. You know, even with, I got a $5 off coupon now, so you're talking, what, seven, eight bucks <laughs> for the CPU. Not a big difference there. But the big difference is gonna be when you get motherboards. So this is the motherboard that I have right here, the ROG Strix B760i. So that's the motherboard that I'm using um, with my 13700. Because again, it's a locked, uh, it's a locked CPU. So I didn't feel the need for an uh, overclockable motherboard. But if you are gonna go with the K model, keep in mind the motherboard, you know, you're gonna need a Z690, Z790. And for this same motherboard, 219 bucks for the B760, it's a $400 motherboard for the Z790 model. So while the CPUs themselves are pretty comparable in price, the motherboard pricing can be pretty drastic. Now you can get cheaper ones, obviously, if you wanna go, you know, right here with the ASRock, you know, you can get one for, it's a Z790, right? It's uh, overclockable, but you know, you're sacrificing a lot. So if you wanna get a nicer motherboard, you know, the B760 might save you a decent amount of money there. So, and that's not to mention even the cooling, right? So if you're gonna get, um, something like the U9S, uh, that's about 20, I think, dollars more expensive than the Be Quiet um, uh, Pure Rock LP, which didn't even do enough cooling. So the Pure Rock is about 50 bucks. The U9S was about 75, I think, at the time that I purchased it, 80 with tax. Um, so I'm sorry, that's actually more like 35 40 bucks difference. And now if you're talking about going from the potentially 150 watts of the uh, non-K model to 225 potentially of the K model, the U9S may be enough to do it, but you may need to go uh, something, you know, bigger than that. I'm not too sure, you know, and now you're kind of limiting what you can even do in a small form factor computer. So, you know, you may have to go with some uh, custom water cooling, some custom loop type things. I mean, I'm not too sure. So all of that price builds up, right? So 50, you know, $10 for the CPU, potentially $45 for the cooler. Now you're at 50 bucks and then another 150 ish for the motherboard. You're sitting at around 200 extra dollars. And at the end of the day, you go for 0.2 gigahertz max boost. Uh, I don't know that that makes a whole lot of sense. So that's all I really got to say. I'll throw up the uh, the benchmark numbers. You guys can see there. It's nothing gaming-wise because you don't really learn a lot from what a CPU can do through gaming. So it's just going to be some productivity benchmarks and such. And if there are benchmarks I guess you guys want to see or you care to know more about my Bitfinex portal build, let me know down in the comments. And I'll try to help you out with whatever I can. But otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed this. Consider dropping a like and a subscribe. Otherwise, God bless.